Maneuver your pieces to capture the opponent's king. That's the essence of Japan's most popular board game, shogi. Shogi dates back more than 400 years and has been a widely enjoyed pastime for centuries. It has recently been used in education to boost the brain power of children. And the internet has opened up new ways to enjoy the game. This time on Japanology Plus, our theme is Shogi. We'll explore the world of an old board game that continues to fascinate the Japanese of today. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm in Osaka, in a neighborhood called Shinsekai, literally New World, although you have to wonder how long ago that name was coined. The area is famous for its bars and restaurants and general working class atmosphere. In the past, notorious might have been a better adjective. It's also well known as a magnet for enthusiasts of shogi. This tower called Tsu Tenkaku is a symbol of the neighborhood. And at its foot, you find this monument shaped like a shogi piece. Now, this was put up in honor of a man called Sankichi Sakata, who was a legendary shogi master who lived here in Osaka about 100 years ago. These days, throughout Japan, there are some 12 million people who play shogi. It's about 10% of the population. And the game has been popular with every strata of society for several hundreds of years now. Let's start off by getting acquainted with the game of shogi. Shogi is played on a board with a 9x9 grid, 81 squares on which 40 wooden pieces are placed. Each side starts with 20 pieces in set positions. Players take turns moving them. The player who captures the other's king is the winner. Shogi's roots can be traced to ancient India and a board game modelled on warfare. It was called Chaturanga. This game spread to many parts of the world. In the West, it evolved into chess. In Japan, into Shogi. From the 17th century onward, Shogi spread throughout Japan. It became an everyday pastime among the common people and a way for samurai to hone their strategic thinking. Today, roughly 12 million people play shogi. Of those, about 160 are professionals who make a living at the game. There are seven titles shogi professionals vie for, with prizes of up to 40 million yen, which makes for intense competition. The happenings and results of each tournament game are reported enthusiastically in the media. Because it's a battle between two opponents thinking as hard as possible about their moves, shogi is often called a martial art of the mind, and people love watching it. So let me introduce you to my guru for today, who is Mr. Masahiko Urano. He's a professional shogi player and an Osaka native. Urano-san, nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you as well. Now, I have to admit, I had no idea that Osaka was such an important place in terms of shogi. Yes, it certainly is. Especially this neighborhood, Shinsekai. You could almost call it shogi town. There are still lots of old shogi parlors called dojo. I'll take you to one. Let's go. Masahiko Urano has been a shogi pro for 30 years. He is known for a well-rounded playing style that can handle whatever his opponents throw at him. He is also a prolific writer of shogi manuals and practice books for beginners. And he teaches children at Shogi Dojo around Japan. Urano is a very active promoter of the game. How far back do you go with this neighborhood? 
As a teenager, I had a part-time job at a shogi dojo. It was located in an area just one station away from here. Not far at all. See that cluster of people? Here we are. This place is the Sankei Club. Oh, wow. There's actually people watching from outside. Wow, look at all the people in here. This place has become a popular tourist attraction. Even people who don't know a thing about shogi come here to look. The players are all so focused on the game. Welcome, please come in. Thank you. I can see you're very busy today. Yes, we get so many people, I'm very grateful. <laughs> if one comes in for a game, what do you do? First of all, we need to work out how good you are. Even if you say you're hopeless, we'll pair you with somebody and see how it goes, so we can find you a good match. A lot of people come here on their own. Um, what does it cost? It's 300 yen per hour, or 1,000 yen for the whole day if you stay four hours or more. You can stay and relax. Is, is there any room for us to have a game? Yes, at the back. Please go right in. The Sankei Club is the most renowned shogi establishment in Osaka. It opened right after the Second World War and retains the atmosphere of that era. This popular spot draws shogi enthusiasts not just from Osaka, but from across Japan. They come here to test their mettle. How old were you when you started coming to places like this? Let me see. I started taking shogi classes when I was about 10 years old. And actually, I played shogi against adults, grown men, quite a lot. At first, I played against blokes who weren't so good, but even so, I couldn't beat them at all. Then, over time, I did start to beat them, and I started playing against better grown-ups. I worked my way up through stronger and stronger opponents, all adults, which, as a boy, was a lot of fun. So, do you know the rules of shogi, how the pieces move? You know, somebody did explain it to me once, but I think I've forgotten everything, so I'd appreciate it if you can tell me all over again. Each piece has its own way of moving, some quite interesting. First, there's this one, with the character walk on it. It represents a foot soldier. Okay, it's like a horn and chest. It can move forward only one square at a time. Okay. These two include the character for wheel, which suggests they are very good at moving forward. This is the lance, which can move any number of squares forward, but it can't go backwards. Oh, only forwards. Okay. And here's the other one. It can move freely along rank or file. Quite an active piece. Uh, okay, so that's like the rook in chess. Okay. Uh -huh. There are five other pieces in shogi, each with their own way of moving. But the complexity doesn't end there. First, there is promotion. Once a piece reaches the opponent's territory, it is flipped over and acquires a greater range of movement. Secondly, there is the concept of dropping pieces that you've captured. Captured pieces become yours, and you're free to place them almost anywhere on the board. This dropping rule is unique to shogi. Being able to use captured pieces makes things so interesting. For example, I take a bishop, and then my bishop is taken. My opponent takes my bishop. This means we each have a bishop in hand, and we can place them back on the board. We can reuse them. Reuse them as a piece of the same value. Oh, really? When you play chess, you, obviously, you, you take pieces from the other person, but then they go out of play, so the number of pieces on the board decreases. So that doesn't happen in shogi, right? In chess, the number of pieces is reduced as the game goes on. The possibilities become more restricted. 
the number of moves is reduced. Shogi is exactly the opposite. You can use captured pieces. You can choose pretty much exactly where you want to put them. So the possible moves from a given position dramatically increase. Shogi is a game in which possibilities expand as the game proceeds. It's more complicated and more thrilling, with more opportunity for reversals of fortune. OK, I can imagine that being pretty thrilling to watch as well. So, Mr. Barakan, why don't we play a game of shogi now? You and me. <laughs> it's like a suicide mission, isn't it? Well, oh, of course, I'll give you a bit of a handicap to make the game more even. What kind of handicap? Well, let's see. OK. I'll remove all my interesting movers. I'll use just my king and my pawns. Let's begin. Oh, so you can move your king first. All right. OK, I'm going to go... Nice move. Uh, You've finally taken one of my pieces. Okay. Oh no, that was so stupid. <sighs> it's starting to look a bit difficult for you. I'm sorry, but here comes the knight. So that's checkmate. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you totally forget about. I mean, I'd taken your knight, and I'd completely forgotten that he was sitting there, and that you could bring him back anytime you want and put him anywhere on the board. And that was like a bolt out of the blue. So obviously, you kind of have to get used to that. Yes, I think that's the thing that makes shogi so fascinating. For a professional like yourself, normally how many moves ahead would you be thinking? I'm always thinking at least 10 moves ahead and trying to work out how things might unfold in various situations. If I think for a while I'm considering several hundred possible moves, that's pretty common. Wow. So you spend quite a long time thinking between moves if you're playing with an experienced player. It can sometimes take an hour or two to make a move. Wow. A shogi match can last a very long time. Some extend over two days. At the end of a long match, the etiquette is for the loser to announce his own defeat and bow. The end game is one of the highlights of shogi. It's all about how clearly you can see the situation and exactly when you should admit defeat. A player must know how to lose gracefully. Playing shogi as a pro, how does it feel when you have to admit defeat? When I'm resigning the game, I'm actually quite calm. It's before that, when things are not looking good and I realize that I'm going to lose. Admitting to myself that I'm going to lose is pretty tough. But you need to accept it, so I try to bring myself to a position that lets me lose in a not-so-embarrassing way. That's what I aim to do. Then ultimately I can calmly accept the defeat, bow and say I lose. So even if you can see that you're going to lose the match, do you sometimes have to engineer the timing of it? Yes. The timing of resigning the game, the position when you do so, can be very stylish. In fact, the loser looks cooler than the winner in that situation. Losers who lose with style are admired. You're a cool loser. It's actually very hard to explain, but it does happen. Anyway, I always hope for a good match like that. The fastest growing segment of the shogi population is the young players. 
Japan's birth rate continues to decline, but the number of participants in the nation's largest youth shogi tournament has grown 16-fold since it started in 2001. Many parents encourage their children to learn shogi, seeing it as a positive influence. It really builds concentration. It's given him confidence. He's more confident on the football pitch, and in fact, he's twice as focused at everything else, too. The children themselves recognize how shogi has changed them. Thinking hard is more fun now. I can take a test, and I'm not worried about the things that are going on around me. The reputation of shogi as a way to improve children's abilities has spread outside Japan as well. In China, a growing number of schools, currently more than a hundred, are bringing Japanese shogi into their classes to cultivate cognitive skills through its complex rules. This state-run school has a shogi class once a week. Correct! Good job! Shogi builds thinking skills. It's improved the arithmetic of the children in my class. This boy, for example, was not so good at arithmetic, but now he's getting excellent marks. As an educational tool for bringing the best out in students, Shogi's appeal is growing in Japan and beyond. We've come to another Shogi club across town from the last one. This is enormous, this place. I can't believe it. And it's completely full of people and a lot of kids here, too. It's great for me, this. There are so many games these days that you can play alone, but here they are playing each other face to face. It makes me very happy to see all these children so engrossed in playing shogi. It really does. And from what I can see, some of the children are paired with other children, not necessarily the same ages, and some are playing with adults, which is kind of interesting too. Well, shogi is a game where age is irrelevant. When I was young, I was a reserved boy who didn't talk much. But playing against adults at the shogi club made me stronger, you might say. It brought me into conversation with adults. That helped me learn how to be more communicative. What benefit do you think that kids get from playing shogi regularly? Shogi is a game in which you have to think through the moves and make decisions all on your own. There's a lot going on, whether you win or lose. If your decisions bring success, you gain confidence in your abilities. And if you lose, you think over why you lost. It's meaningful that you get to be creative. You think about various things that you can do the next time you play. I think it builds up your ability to think for yourself, and it helps you make decisions for yourself. Matt Alt is a translator from the US with an interest in everything Japanese, from history to pop culture. In Plus One, he presents practical tips you can use yourself. I'm Matt Alt, and today we're here at a kid center in downtown Tokyo where they're going to teach me how to play shogi even if you don't know how to read the kanji characters on the pieces. First up is a special kind of shogi that's played kind of like backgammon, where you throw the shogi pieces like dice. Let's check it out. Okay, face down counts zero and face up counts one, so I can move two squares. Okay, so where's the start and where's the goal? You start from the corner and go around once, then move in one square and go around again. The first person to reach the center wins. Now I get it, this is starting to make sense. Pretty simple, right? But depending on how your piece lands, you can get bonus points. For instance, 
This counts as five squares. This counts as 10. And this, which almost never comes up, counts as a whopping 100 squares. Come on, 100. Come on, 100. Ooh. Oh, 10. Yes! So this game's been played this way for generations, and there's lots of little regional variations in the rules and things like that. So you can customize it and play however you want. Next, we're gonna take a look at a game that actually incorporates some of Shogi's rules. And here you have it. This version replaces the kanji characters with little animals. But don't let these cute faces fool you. This game contains the true essence of Shogi to capture the opponent's lion the king of the jungle. You can also win by getting your lion into the back row. The dots on every piece show you the direction that piece can move. Well, those are the rules. Now, let's give it a try. Dunking. Thank you very much. You win some, you lose some. Especially with customers as tough as these. The world of Shogi has 400 years of respected tradition. But changes are afoot. This is a live internet feed of a shogi match. Viewers send comments and messages of support, which scroll across the screen in real time. Recent title matches have drawn online audiences of roughly 300,000. Digital media has affected more than just how people watch shogi. These are game records, notation of every move in a game. In the past, they were only available on paper. But now the data is stored on the internet. Using this online shogi database, you can replay the moves of a big match wherever you are. One young shogi professional has made a name for himself by harnessing the power of the internet. 25-year-old Tetsuro Itotani. Itotani grew up in a provincial city and gained experience by playing in online shogi dojo, eventually becoming good enough to turn pro. In Japan's half a dozen virtual dojo, you can play anytime, anywhere. They can attract over 60,000 players a day. In one day, I might play dozens of games. That means I'd get through thousands of games each year. I learned a tremendous amount that way. That study is what enabled me to become a pro. Without it, my development would have been delayed by at least a few years. In the traditional world of shogi, the digital revolution is propelling the game into the future. The internet has really changed everything. What is the biggest effect that it's had on shogi? In a nutshell, it's made information easier to come by. When I was learning the game in my teens, if there was a match in Tokyo, say, the game record for it wouldn't reach Osaka until a week or two later. It was hard to get information on what the best players were doing. Nowadays, you can see the latest strategies as soon as someone plays them. That makes a big difference. So does that raw information actually have a direct effect on the results of matches? Shogi is a very complicated game, and no two matches are ever alike from start to finish. There are always new situations. 
That is where a shogi player's true ability is tested. Even though everyone can access the data now, in the end, decisions have to be made. What works, what strategies are most effective, and so on. You have to make that assessment yourself. Having a lot of data in itself does not mean you're going to win. I think you think of shogi as being a very kind of, what's a game of logic? Um, a lot of sitting and thinking, um, but there are, I would imagine, sort of other aspects to it as well. There is a psychological element, of course. I mean, for example, when I'm feeling discouraged or lacking in initiative, mentally speaking, I don't play as well. That kind of thing happens. There's another thing that's a bit strange, actually. In long matches, I play from morning till after midnight. On days like that, it's not unusual for me to lose something like two kilograms of weight. Even though I'm eating normally, even though I'm probably drinking more water than usual, I still lose weight. Have you any idea why? I have no idea. It might be because I'm doing such intense thinking all day long. I don't know if that's possible. I think the game places comprehensive demands on you, your mind, body and spirit. It's such a complex game that professionals who have played for decades still haven't mastered it completely. You could play for centuries and never do that. We don't know who invented it, but it's an ingenious game. It really is. It's been an interesting day. I don't know quite how much I've learned about shogi, but when we had our little game earlier on, uh, it's really stuck in my memory. Uh, that piece that I lost and had gone totally out of my mind suddenly came back out of nowhere to haunt me. And I'm sure there's a life lesson to be learned in there somewhere. There almost <laughs> certainly is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next time on Japanology Plus, cherry trees, the crowning glory of springtime in Japan. We explore the diversity and deep appeal of the cherry trees and their place in the Japanese heart.